My guest today is Alex Revere. Alex, welcome back. Hey, I'm glad to be back. It's super, super fun to be here. Absolutely. And um, the reason I asked you to come back is because we ran out of time last time. You were showing me all of these cool things with CSS, and we got to 29 minutes and 55 seconds, and I said, oh, got to run. Uh, yeah. But you had a whole list of other things. Um, for, for those yeah. that want to check it out, the, the show that we recorded before, they can go back. And I should have known this months ahead of time, but you are episode number 787, about six months ago. Yeah. Well, in the intervening six months, uh, I will tell you right now that there have been um, a whole bunch of new things added as well that we won't even be going over necessarily. So <laughs> we, new things that have been invented. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, every day, every day I wake up and I'm just like, oh, there's more stuff. Um, so <laughs> it is it is a never ending uh, cycle of getting uh, <laughs> new things together. So it's very maybe, exciting. Maybe we'll do a part three. <laughs> we might have to. Um, cool. Well, we're going to cover a few other things today. So last time we covered custom properties. We, cus we covered CSS Grid. We covered logical properties. We covered has. We sort of touched on media queries a little bit. So I think that's probably a good place to start is media queries because we've had media queries for years, right? With the advent of the um, iPhone, they became more prevalent using uh, for responsive design, right? Being able to design one website that works on both desktop and on a phone. And like, how do we reason about that? So I think as a good place to jump into, we should talk about container queries, which is sort of the next evolution of uh, responsive design, or as we're now calling it, intrinsic design, where you're able to just say, this is what something should look like, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Yeah, container. The word container is so overloaded in container science. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, it's actually appropriate um, for whoop, geez, uh, for uh, this specific usage, though, so it is it is a correct usage. All right, so we've got my screen here. Uh, we've got a blank canvas that we're going to start with. Now, in previous times, we would have uh, needed to make media queries for different sized screens, right? Media queries can be used to sort of set like. This is the medium that we're writing CSS for, such as like if you're wanting to print something, you can make print styles. If you're wanting to use a desktop, then you would have something that's got a wider screen port view. If you have a, uh, a phone, then you need a smaller viewport view sort of a thing, right? And so what we have now, though, is because of all of this sort of componentization of how we build websites, right? With the advent of React and Vue and all of these front-end frameworks that are all about, like, put all of your stuff together in, like, one thing. Um, what we've got now in the browser, and I believe that this is compatible across all browsers now. I, for a while there, Microsoft, or uh, uh, Firefox was a bit of a holdout. Um, they were just a little bit behind. And now I think we've got it in everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a thing called container queries. So previously, the way that we would do something, so let's see, we'll just add in some stuff here, right? We'll do like a main section, and then we'll make, um, we'll make like a, what's a good one? We'll do like a pagination component, right? So pagination component is a great example of where we can use a container query. So uh, we'll give this a class of pagination, right? Sort of set up our little bit of... Uh, Stuff here. That's the wrong button. Uh, great. Uh, and then, you know, when you have a pagination thing, right, we need to be able to list all the pages, right? So we need to have a list, and it's going to have, like, links, like, 1 through 10 or something like that. But then if you have those sort of side by side, uh, you're going to have problems on smaller screens because then it'll just like shoot off the end of the screen. So we need to do something that works for smaller screens. Mm. Um, and so if we do like a UL uh, 
That's your UL LI A. Uh, the LI is going to be times 10, just for ease. And then uh, it's your href equals pound sign, dollar sign. Uh, and uh, nope, we want to do pound sign. Nope, we want to do pound sign. Nope, we want to do, hold on, I've got it. I cannot help you with this. I'm not familiar with this tool. (laughs) Oh, wait, no, it's dollar sign. There we go. That's, hold on. Oh, my gosh. Okay, sorry. This is, so this is Emmet. Emmet is a wonderful, like, shortcut maker. And basically, I'm using a CSS selector to kind of, like, make a whole bunch of of, uh, HTML. So that is what we're doing here. Great. So now we have a whole bunch of links right in a list. And so let's go ahead and start writing some CSS. So we're going to do our uh, dot pagination. uh, And we're going to have our UL. And that's going to be display flex. And we're going to make it, uh, it should just automatically do it. Um, We need to also do list style. List style, none. Now, this is not super accessible. There's some more accessibility things you need to take into account here because when you remove styles from things, it gets funky. But this is a good example of like what we can do. And we'll make a gap of like 10 pixels. Right. Now it's readable. Now it's readable. Um, and we'll give it we'll give it a little bit of we'll give it a little bit of font um, sizing as well. So let's make it uh, font size. Uh, we'll do we'll we'll do like uh, 1.25. Right. Great. So it's a little bit bigger, right? This, this is good. So we have this lovely list, and if we were to add a whole bunch more of these, right, it would continue sort of across the page here. Hmm. But then if we were to like move down to a mobile phone size, right, it would potentially get yeah, it's not responsive at all. Now. When we're talking about media queries, it's very good to do like viewport stuff, right? Because we can figure out what we want to do with like the size of the screen. But what if we want to have the same pagination component, but maybe we're using it in a pop-up, right? We're using it in a in a dialogue. We're using it in like a modal that pops up on top of something else. And we know that it's going to be a smaller view, right? Well, we could use like a class and be like, okay, cool. But this is the small pagination component. But what if, what if David, what if? What if indeed? We could style something based on the size of the container that it's in. Whoa, right? That, that would be a game changer. It would be a game changer. So let's talk about container queries. With container queries, what we can do is that we can say, all right, I want to have a little form here. And I'm just going to do this the wrong way right for right now. But we're going to do like a select, right? And it's going to have inside of it um, 10 options that match our uh, pages. So we'll do option times 10 um, and that's going to have a value uh, equal to the dollar sign and then we're going to do side of that this dollar sign right uh, cool okay so this now so now we have this lovely little drop down right and so this is our like reduced pagination component right when we're in a really small space we just want it to be a drop down that you know, gives us the option, and then we'll add some JavaScript in to like listen to it. Once again, this is not super accessible. I wouldn't necessarily do this it this way in production. I'd probably add it to like a form or something like that so that we can actually like do things better. But this works given the purposes of this example. So what I want to do now is that within our pagination component, so we'll do pagination, right? Uh, and we're going to do select. And I want the select to just not show up at all. Display none, right? Cool. It's gone. It's gone. Yay. So now we don't need it. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do, uh, give me a second. I got to look this 
I gotta look this syntax up. Um, it's new enough that I don't have it committed to my memory yet. Uh, cool. Uh, yes, do container name and then we can do that. Okay, cool. So what we wanna do here is when it gets below a certain size, it's going to be the select rather than the UL. And rather than doing it based on viewport units where we're saying, hey, if it's smaller than this, right, don't you know, change the look of it, we're gonna do a container query. So first thing that we would do with the container query is that we're actually gonna name a container. So we're gonna do uh, container, contain, is it contain? No, it is, Container name, that's what I thought. Right, and uh, I think we can actually just do container and we'll do, so we give it a name, so we're gonna call it pagination. And then we add in a slash to say, hey, there's gonna be a, another thing here. And the thing that we wanna do is that we wanna say, what are we containing it on? So the type of container this is. And in our case, we wanna, do something based on the inline size, so how wide it is. So we're gonna do inline size. Great. So now, oh, just kidding, that is in the wrong place, however, because we actually wanna do it on dot pagination. Take that out, put it in the right place. Brilliant. Cool. Um, okay, so now we've defined our container. So our container is this lovely div right here. Okay. And based on this container, we can then do stuff. So I'm gonna introduce a new concept that is also one that I wanted to talk about today. And I think now is a good time to talk about it. Uh, David, have you ever used a preprocessor for CSS like SAS or less or, um, you know, I've I think played Stylus around with one? it a little bit, but yeah. uh, gen not, not, not often. So you've, but you've, have you ever used it so that you can like put a media query or a, a class name inside of another class or whatever, right? Being able to like nest a style inside of another style. I do. It's been a long time since I use it, but I do remember that feature. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, good news that exists in the browser now. Hmm. So this is not going to be pre-processed, right? This is just straight CSS. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to put a container query in here. So inside of here. I hope this works, that I'm not talking out my butt on this one, but um, uh, we do container pagination. Uh, container pagination, and then it's just like a media query in that we would say like inline, uh, we'll do width, width, uh, no, max width, min width, min width. Oh, I always get this one backwards, min width, No, oh, max width. That is it. Max. Yes, because I want to be less than max width. It's going to be, we'll say 200 pixels, right? Okay. And then inside of there, I can now do display none. Okay, so if, if uh, the container is resized, Mm -hmm. Just below 200 pixels, it disappears. Got it. It disappears. Okay. So now when we go below 200 pixels, it disappears, right? right? Okay, cool. Great. Super handy. And we can do the same thing inside of this select that we've made here. I cannot see my highlighting because the contrast on my uh, monitor is not doing great. Mm. But we can say display uh, revert, I think. Is it revert or is it initial? We'll find out. Great. So now we've got a I select so you, when so it gets one, below a certain size. Ah, uh, uh, one disappears, the other one appears. Got it. Yeah. So now whenever we hit that 200 pixel mark, then we have this thing. Now, why is this important? This is this is working just like a media query at this point, right? Like when we resize the screen, it does the thing, right? Yep. Maybe a grid is appropriate if it's wide. Maybe just a list is appropriate yeah. if it's not if it's narrow. So. What if, though, if we take all of this HTML and we copy it and we put it in a box, right? We're going to make another div. 
uh, and that div, we're just going to say, hey, this div here, this is going to be, uh, this is always going to be um, 200 pixels wide, right? Maybe this is a sidebar, right? Maybe this is a sidebar where you can choose your navigation or what have you. Uh, we can do, uh, it's, it's going to be 200 pixels, right? Brilliant. So inside of that, if we put the same pagination component that we've made here, right, with this class pagination, if we put that inside of there, um, it's always going to show a select box. Right. Because it's based on the container size of that pagination div. It's based on the size of that pagination div. And so this works better when you can see it on like a full screen versus a thing. But being able to like reuse a component and style it based off of the container rather than based on the viewport size allows you more opportunities to do things where it's like, oh, if it's in the header, right, if it's taking up the full width of the screen, then we can do things like that. We, we can like make it a nice wide display of something. But if it's in a sidebar, it can be like a much narrower thing. Another example that I have is I think one place that we did this was a Shopify sidebar where you have the like add to cart button. Um, and I had a grid of like icons that like depending on how wide the container it was in, it either took up the full screen or like two rows or like, right. It wasn't like a logical thing of like, Oh, if the screen is this size, then it needs to be this way versus this. It was like, okay, it starts with two. And then like the, sidebar itself would get a little bit narrower and then it would switch to one column and then like the screen would get narrower and suddenly it was two columns like full width on the screen and then it was like going back down it was one column on the screen and uh you can that's like four media queries to make that happen because you have like multiple breakpoints right. and you can do it with one container query so this is like super powerful when you get into like not worrying about, you know, well, what screen size of a device are we on? You know, all of this stuff. Like, w you can just worry about, like, where is this going? How does this get used? Like, how does this thing get used? And it sort of frees you up from having to, like, really think about, like, well, what breakpoint are we in? And all of that sort of stuff. So container queries are super powerful. Yeah, and then I, so it, simp it simplifies that piece because I, I yeah. it seems like I could use this for other things, you know, beyond just screen size, container size. Mm -hmm. And maybe maybe if the if the container is orange, maybe I want the color to be blue. But if it's white, I want it to be black. Things like that. Yes, and so that is actually um, the thing that it's not quite. I don't know if we have full support for all browsers yet. I did not check that this morning because these things are like moving super fast. Um, we do have a container style query. Uh, and so going back to sort of our previous discussion about, um, uh, like the, you know, uh, custom properties and stuff like that. The style query allows you to do things based on the style currently applied to stuff. So in, in our case, we have this um, in pagination container. So we'll just change it to be a container name, right? Um, and it will do that. And then we have to do... I haven't actually played with this one yet because it's new enough that I'm like, I don't know if we can do it. This is not supported in Firefox. Fantastic. Um, okay, so I don't actually need that. Hold on. Give me a second. Let's back that up. All right. So <clears throat> in theory, I would think that you would have to define the, the as a style container, but maybe not. Mm, all right. We'll find out. We're going on an adventure, David. Well, so just so I know where you're going with this, um, this is a, a different feature that's mm -hmm. related to this, uh, uh, what you just showed us. But, yes. Um, but it's, it's, but it's, it is a different feature. Yes. So okay. this is a different feature. It's a similar feature, but it's a different feature. Okay. So in theory, the way that this works is that you can do... I'm having to look up this like stuff right now. 
we may have to skip it. The idea basically is that you can query a style type, right? So you would be able to do like, hey, if the background color is black, right, then make the text color white, right? right. And all of that sort of stuff. So we can, we can, in theory, do container style queries and stuff like that. I don't actually know the syntax for this well enough to be able to do it just off the top of my head. So we're going to skip over it, but it is a thing and it's not quite out fully yet it is very very close though okay. um it is oh no wait actually just kidding hold on oh oh uh. as we're speaking it just as we're news. speaking <laughs> i think yeah i think it's actually breaking available news <laughs> in all browsers so this documentation is not up to date love it um so we can do Container type size, inline size, naming containers, container name. Great. Give me, give me style. Give me style, style, style. You don't have to specify that it is a style type container. All elements can be style query containers. There we go. Great. Okay, cool. We'll do this then. All right. So what that means is that we can do um the following we can say hey if um the background right if the background is so the the syntax for this is very similar it's container and then we can do um you do a style declaration and you say hey if the background color is black or is yeah black right we want this to look a little different. Um, and what I want it to do is that I actually want it to be, uh, I want to give this a background color of hot pink. Of course. Of course, because we love that hot pink. That is that is my favorite. Um, then inside of here, I also want to do um, at container, uh, we'll do the same thing, right? Uh, okay, so copy that, paste it in here. Let's find out how badly I've screwed this up. All right, so now what we'll do is that we'll make this one have a background. Okay. I can spell background color uh, black. And in theory, that's a terrible example, actually. Let's do it this way. So we have to, we do have to define an at property. So if I haven't talked about at property yet, uh, then we should talk about that because this is very relevant. So what at property does is that it allows us to define um, a custom property sort of beforehand, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, we can do um, uh, we can define a custom property by basically being like, so let me back up. Everybody loves TypeScript, right, David? That seems I to love be it. a, yeah, it seems to be a general consensus. So many people love it. You either love it or you hate it, right? <laughs> um, and uh, so one of the problems is, is that, you know, we that TypeScript is solving is that JavaScript is not a strongly typed language. Right. Well, CSS, is a strongly typed language. You just don't know it because okay. most of that is hidden from you. So like if you were to try to assign a pixel value to be your font color, right? CSS would just ignore that line. It's like, that's not valid. That's not a valid color. That's a size, right? So it knows the difference. It's looking for a specific type. And so what at property does is that it allows us to define uh, a custom property. So background color. Background color, right? So we'll define our own custom property. So we have a dash dash background color and we're gonna make it be, it has a syntax that is, it makes it be a uh, color. So this has to be a color type. Um, it also needs to inherit, we want it to inherit its value through the cascade, 
right? We don't want it to just be sort of isolated. Uh, so we want it to inherit. And then we also want to give it an initial value, which is going to be white, because that's what we said, right? We, we're going to have our initial value be white. And so now we have this lovely background color um, custom property. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to be like, hey, guess what, HTML? Uh, we're going to have HTML, and it's going to have background color is going to equal var dash dash background color, right? Okay. Okay. So now our HTML background color is white. It was I mean, before, it was already yeah. white, but now, now yeah. it's actually white. So, yeah. and the way that we can tell this is that if I were to change this to our favorite, which is hot pink. Um, we have an extraneous P. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, it will. I don't think it likes that hot pink. Just try it I don't red. Think I know. Hold on. Does it not like the hot pink? It might not like Just try pink. red. We'll do red. Hot pink is such a good color, though. Yeah, it fits in with your electric boogaloo theme. Yeah. I, um, didn't think you were, I didn't think you were old enough to know break into electric boogaloo. <laughs> It you know sometimes uh, I surprise people. All right, what's going on? What's going on in here? There it is. Something happened. What'd you do? It has to inherit, not inherit. Oh. Um, <laughs> it needs an S in there. All right, so we can put it back on our hot pink there. example because I love that. We'll finish this up and we'll we'll have a brilliant thing. All right, so now what I can do is I can say hey. Um, let's set our background color to, so we're going to actually look at dash dash background color. So this is the thing that we care about, right? And so if I make, um, my main have, main is going to have a background color, background color is going to be var, Dash dash background color. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what this does is that now where we have that style that we were doing before, right? And we were doing background color black. I can now do dash dash background color black. And suddenly all of our components that have this container query in it where we're saying, hey, if the dash dash background color becomes black, make the background color be hot pink. So now we've done that. So now we've been able to basically reset or do whatever we want to with it. We can make this white, we could make this whatever. So you're able to query it based on custom properties, um, which is, so basically this is an if statement, right? right this is an right. if statement. You can now right. do whatever. So there you go. Uh, no, I like this. this is, uh, if you allow people to style it, um, style their own, um, user interface, yeah. then sometimes they'll set a style that is incompatible. And in, the way around that usually is to say, okay, now I just set the color of every single component for every single po style possibility so they don't accidentally set black on black text or things like that. But here exactly. you can just say, set the background, and then ahead of time you'll know that, uh, well, if it's black, then it should be something that contrasts well with black. If it's white, it should be something like black that contrasts well with white and, and so on. So, so yeah, so there we go. Uh, and, and the other thing, good thing about this too, is that right now it's only um, able to be used with custom properties. The goal is eventually to have this be able to be used with any property that you set, I believe. Um, there's probably a list of them that it won't be, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, but we should be able to, you should be able to do this code in every single browser today. Like this is, this is working and you should be able to just use this. Uh, so yeah, that is, right. that's a, that's a good stopping point. Now this is yeah. called style queries and what we showed before was container queries. That's what we've covered. Yeah. Today. So this is, so we have container queries and then this is style container queries, style container queries. Okay. I want to make sure I'm, my syntax yeah. is right. When I write up the show notes, <laughs> That is a really good stopping point. And yeah. uh, maybe we can get together and do some more stuff in six months and yeah, talk and, about and what's been invented. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some brand new stuff. There's view transitions, which is a hot new thing, and I have not worked with them enough to know. But basically, it's the idea of like 
if you're going from one page to another, uh, you can just smoothly do that now, and the uh, browser will handle it. Things, um, like, things like fading and uh, maybe yeah. pay, appeal and things like that? Yeah, yeah. You can do page transition effects. Um, oh. And uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic API, and I will, maybe we'll talk about that next time. Awesome. Alex, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Technology empowers communities to connect, communicate, and sometimes make lifelong friends. We are all privileged to live in such an amazing time where such things are possible.